The first point, and again, I'll enumerate this from Scripture in a moment, is that the enemy comes in moments of transition when we're transitioning into fulfillment. So I believe there's some of us here that 2022 is the beginning of a transition into a significant fulfillment in your life, but you've been facing new enemies, and we'll get to this in a moment, but you've been facing new enemies in your life as a result of that transition, and the enemy has been contesting the new territory that you're trying to take. And so if you find yourself in that position, I want to tell you, the Lord spoke to me and said, the key to victory, and we see it in the life of David in a moment, the key to victory is inquiry. Turn to somebody and say, the key to victory is inquiry. Now you're doubly responsible because I just made you a teacher. You see that? That was tricky. No. <laughs> All right, good. The key to victory is inquiry. That was a, that was a joke. All right. And then, and then point three, God releases creative strategy for breakthrough and you need both his left-handed activity and his right-handed activity. So those are the three points that I'm gonna break down for us prophetically, but if you want the summary of them, it's, it's those three. The enemy comes in moments of transition into fulfillment, and I believe many are in just such a transition right now. Your key to victory is inquiring of the Lord, intimacy, connection to his heart, because the strategy that's worked before isn't guaranteed to work in the same way again. You have to allow God to continue to be your source, and then God releases creative strategy as we inquire of him that will bring the breakthrough and the victory, and you need both his left hand and his right hand. So let's break it down from this passage. I'll read it to us, and then we'll go back. So David has just moved the capital of his kingdom to Jerusalem, and he's occupied the former Philistine city of Jerusalem. He's actually been anointed as king and it says, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek out David. And when David heard of it, he went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines came and spread themselves out in the valley of Raphim. Then David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go up against the Philistines, and will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, while I will surely give the Philistines into your hand. So David came up to Baal Perazim and defeated them there and said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me like the breakthrough of waters. Therefore, the name of that place was Baal Perazim, which means God of the breakthrough or master of the breakthrough. And it says the Philistines, they abandoned their idols there. So David and his men carried them away. And we could be tempted to stop reading there, but there's actually more to the story. There's a part two to the story. Now the Philistines came up once again and spread themselves out in the valley of Raphim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, you shall not go directly up, but circle around behind them, come at them in front of the balsam trees. It shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then you'll act promptly for then the Lord will go before you and strike the army of the Philistines. And David did so, just as the Lord had commanded him, and struck down the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. Amen. I believe some of you are finding yourselves in the story already, even as I share and as we read the Word of God. So let's break it down again. So David, I'm just going to paraphrase it for us, having just read it. David is anointed as king. It is a moment of critical transition. And in that moment when he's about to occupy the promise that he's had since he was a little boy anointed by Samuel in the house of his father, right? The enemy comes out and spreads out against him. And he's surrounded by enemies on all sides. And we tend to think of different characters in the Bible as somehow being superhuman because we know the end of the story. But I imagine in this moment when David is freshly anointed king and it seems as though he's about to enter into the fulfillment of his rule over Israel, it was probably a very scary thing when the entire valley before him was filled with the, with the enemies that wanted to destroy him. And there's some of you here that in 2022, you began to occupy the promises of God. But in that moment, it says, when the Philistines heard that King David had been anointed as king, when they heard that the anointing was upon him to accomplish the work that he was called to, the enemy came and spread out against him. 
And how many of you know that we face a tireless enemy who does not want to see you, whether it's a transition, you're newly saved and you're transitioning into becoming a disciple of Jesus, the enemy does not want to see you step into what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Whether you've been serving the Lord for a long time and you're stepping into that full-time ministry calling, the enemy does not want to see you step into that fresh anointing to fully serve Jesus. Perhaps you've been operating at a certain level of authority in your business or in your sphere, whether it's education or government, and God is calling you into a greater area of responsibility, faithful and a greater sphere of influence the enemy does not want to see kingdom minded people occupying the greatest places of influence in society and so when those who are anointed by God begin to occupy their rightful places the enemy comes and he spreads himself out and tries to put fear in our hearts but it says David though David's had many battles he doesn't just charge out to face the enemy David did what is David had learned the lessons through his, through his many years in the wilderness that victory comes with inquiry. And when he failed to inquire, David had problems. But when he went to the Lord as the source of his strength, he actually had wisdom and strategy to have victory. And so it says, David inquired... And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. And that was all David needed. And he went out to war and he vanquished his enemy. All David needed was the word of that Lord and the word of the Lord in the moment and he charged forth and apprehended the victory. And the victory was so dramatic that David names the place in memorial of the victory that the Lord granted. It was a memorable victory. It was a victory that he said, it's like, have you ever seen a dam where it actually rises, to, the water level rises to the point that the dam can no longer hold back the water and the water breaks through the dike or breaks through the dam and actually sweeps away everything before it with the force of the torrent. That was the kind of day, victory that David saw the Lord give when he swept away the enemies of the Philistines before him. That is a right-handed victory. That is the kind of victory where you step into the altar with cancer and the Lord releases his power and heals the cancer instantaneously. It's the kind of victory where the person that seems furthest from the Lord in your life suddenly has a dramatic reversal and comes to know the Lord radically. That's the kind of dramatic breakthrough where it seems like you're back up against the wall, but the Lord performs wonders and miracles. He delivers you out of the impossible financial situation or he delivers you from the sin struggle that you've wrestled with for decades. God is a God of the breakthrough. And when we inquire of him, sometimes the word comes that releases the right-handed activity of the Lord. And victory is found in the place of inquiry. That's a good word, and we're tempted to stop right there. But there's actually a second section to this story. Even after this dramatic victory, it says, the Philistines came up once again and then spread themselves out in the Valley of Rephim. See, we have a relentless enemy, and there is a relentless struggle with sin that exists in this world and brokenness. And how many of you know, though you may have experienced in 2022 or the beginning of 2023, a dramatic breakthrough of the Lord, how many of you know that breakthrough is still going to be contested? And the very thing that God has granted, you are going to have to not just fight to possess, but fight to occupy. And what God is doing in 2023 is he's not just giving the victory, but he's teaching us to actually occupy the territory and maintain the promise. But it's going to require more than just the dramatic right hand. It's going to require continued inquiry that gives the right strategy. So when David inquired of the Lord, he said, what was, the, what was the word before? Go up and you'll defeat them. And he went up and he defeated them like a torrent of water sweeps away the enemy. But this answer was entirely different, though the situation was exactly the same. Don't miss this. Be instructed, people of God. He wants you to be so dependent on him that it may be the exact situation that you faced before, but the strategy may be entirely different. So when David inquired of the Lord, he never abandoned the place of inquiry. He didn't become haughty in his own victory. He continued to inquire. It's what made David a man after God's heart. 
the Lord said, you shall not go directly up, circle behind them, come at them in front of the balsam trees, and it will be when you hear the sound of the marching in the top of the balsam trees, you shall act promptly, and the Lord will have gone out before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. So instead of a frontal assault, he comes behind, and there's an unusual supernatural strategy where he hears the footsteps of the armies in the tops of the trees, and he knows now is the time to strike. And this unusual strategy came from the place of inquiry, and it was an entirely different solution to exactly the same problem. So in summary, I really believe that there are those of this in this room that God is wanting to prepare. He's wanting to prepare you to face the enemies that are about to spread out in front of you. He's preparing you through this prophetic instruction so you won't be caught unaware in the moment of trial and difficulty. The key to your victory is cultivating the place of intimacy and inquiry. And as you do that, you're going to have the right-handed breakthrough of God. He's going to sweep before your enemies like a torrential flood. And there's also going to be continued ways in which you have to occupy the territory that you've taken. And that might require a left-handed strategy where you circle around the back and wait for the sound of the footsteps in the tops of the trees. And so we want to pray tonight. We want to pray that God would manifest himself in our midst as the God of the breakthrough. Baal Perazim, the God who breaks forth against our enemies like waters. But I also want to pray that God would give us the wisdom to occupy the very places where he's giving us breakthrough and victory. Amen. Let's stand.